we start off a Saturday night and a Sunday morning, so we praise God for that. I got the lowdown on that. He texted me last night wanted to pray, and the end result was a cousin got saved. People still get saved during COVID, by the way, amen. Uh, nothing stops from people from getting saved, amen, except uh, us not giving out the gospel where they cannot get saved, amen. But praise God, good to be in the house of the Lord. Let me give you some updates on a few things here before we get started and sing our first song. Uh, continue praying for Diana Smith. She is at home. She is recovering. Uh, five weeks more, the doctor wants us to be very careful and only make vital trips to do things that are extremely necessary within the home, nothing outside of the home. She said phoning her or texting her is quite fine, and so want to make sure that we get a hold of that. And thank you for everyone that has uh, been involved in preparing meals or providing gift cards or anything of that nature to assist uh, Diana Smith and her family while she is recovering. So thank you, Shining Light family, for uh, rallying around uh, her and being a blessing. On Saturday note, uh, her uh, dog, Britton, did uh, pass away here on Saturday, I believe it was, or it was Saturday or Friday? Saturday? I think it was yesterday. Saturday. So while she is uh, convalescing and resting, a uh, faithful companion that she had for years passed away. Uh, so do pray for her in regards to that uh, and uh, trusting that God give the comfort that she needs. Also, for those that do not know, Gary Pittman did graduate to glory, went home last Sunday, and uh, he is uh, in glory right now. And we praise God that he was saved and, uh, man, just a uh, testimony of the grace of God. And uh, pray for his brother, John Pittman, and his sister, Kimberly Pittman, as they handle things. And uh, they didn't want a service or anything like that. They're going to get him buried uh, by his dad in California. And that was the desire of Gary. So do pray for John and Kimberly Pittman as they deal with uh, all the arrangements that need to take place. So he was... Uh, very, very grateful to Brother Fred. So, Fred, thank you for uh, your good watch care over Gary in these last couple of years as his memory began to dwindle. We praise God for that. Also, uh, Andrea's nephew passed away last night. Uh, she sent me a text this morning. So, do pray for Reba and the family, Andrea and the family, and the family that lost the, the lad as well, that uh, they would be comforted and they get uh, God's guidance on their hand as well. Uh, Andrea is feeling some pain as well in her shoulder, so she asked for prayer. She said she may have to emergency room, not sure, but we keep her in prayer. So that's an update on what's going on and how we need to pray for one another. Good to see you there, folks, here. Thank you for those that are joining us online. We do pray that you'll enjoy the services today, and uh, it should be a blessing. Been nice and warm lately, man. My kind of weather, 80s uh, yesterday, going to be in the 80s again today. Uh, very nice on Friday as well. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, good weather. And uh, just, just praising God for the opportunity to be in God's house. Uh, we're going to sing our first song, and that is going to be Worthy of Praise. So uh, we can get that up here. Yeah, there we go. Worthy of Praise. My heart overflows, amen, with praise to the Lord. G, give us an intro on that.
praised. None of y'all like to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hey, you cook a good meal. You do a good job. Or something you like to say, good job. Amen. The Lord, every, everything he does is good. Amen. Amen. Always a good time to praise the Lord. Well, let's open up in a word of prayer, and then we'll go on with a few other things. Father, we thank you so much uh, that, uh, Lord, uh, we can praise you, Lord, because you're worthy of all of our praise. Lord, our lips should praise you. Our hearts should be welled up with praise. Whatever thing we do should be honored and glorified in your presence, Lord, by what you have done and what you mean to each and every one of us. Lord, your saints are in some dire needs right now. And, uh, Sister Diana needs uh, your help and your comfort and your grace in her life. And we ask you to just wrap her up with your loving care and encourage her, Lord, with the death of uh, her dog and then the recovery that she has on her foot. And so we just pray that you would encourage her in a marvelous way. And also John and Kimberly Pittman encourage their hearts as well. Lord, they need to hear from you in a marvelous way so that they can see their need for salvation. Then Andrea with her nephew and her passing last night and her shoulder as well. Lord, that she needs you. And so, Lord, there's a, a definite need in our lives. Lord, there's always a need for us to praise you more. Lord, praising you takes our mind and our heart off of our woes and our cares and our concerns. Lifts us up to you who is the God of all comfort, the Amen. God of all praise that can minister in our lives like no one else can do. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, bless now those watching online, encourage their hearts. And those that are here in the auditorium, Lord, encourage their hearts as well through the course of the service. Lord, may we truly give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, we do have some glad tidings. We had uh, two anniversaries yesterday. Amen. Uh, the Duffies uh, had their anniversary yesterday as well as the Myers. So they share an anniversary date. So we're going to sing happy anniversary to them in just a moment. Let's get that up here. Let me give you the rest of the anniversaries for the month of March. Of course, the Duffies and the Myers on the 6th of March. Uh, then you've got the Aphas on March 17th, and that's uh, Janelle and David. And uh, so we've got those things, and we'll do the birthdays right after this. So those anniversaries, the Duffy, the Myers, and uh, the Aphas. Amen. How many years have you guys now been to us? 11. 11. Amen. Oh, no. Praise God. Amen. No, it's been since I was 10 years old, and I'm 50, so it's been 40 years. 40 years of being together and then, and then yeah, kind of loving kind of each other and then keeping each other. Ladies and gentlemen, good, good times, amen, friends. Hey, wouldn't be married if we didn't have a fight here or there and a squabble or disagreement every now and again, amen. Just don't see eye to eye on everything, amen. Just be robots, praise the Lord. Keep the harmony there, amen. All right, we're we'll going happy anniversary to uh, Duffy's, uh, Myers, and uh, the Aethas. All right, this is to stand in.
uh, when the birthdays and anniversaries are. Uh, don't forget to get your days of praise. Get your days of praise. And as I mentioned before, we're not going to have a missions conference this year. Uh, Brother Baldwin is not going to be able to make it, but we will have a missions emphasis day the last Sunday of this month. And then uh, it's coming up in April, we'll start our mission state promise all over again. And again, I encourage you, if you can continue giving what you're giving, please do so. If you can give more, please do so as well. Missionaries are still out there. They still need our support. You'd be surprised the missionaries that have decreased in their income because the churches have decreased in size. <clears throat> so the, many of the missionaries out there are making it, but the, some are struggling. Uh, so if you can do something more than what you're doing, do so. If you cannot, we definitely understand that. If you can maintain where you're at, praise God for that as well. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing the praise song, and that is uh, coming up behind me. Amen. The praise song. I will sing to the Lord with a praise song. You can tell today it's all about praising the Lord. Why? Praising God that takes our attention off of our circumstances ourselves and place it on the Lord Jesus Christ where it should be. Amen. Uh, this one starts out, I will sing to the Lord with a praise song. You say, preacher, I don't sound good. The Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So it doesn't matter how you sound, it's the heart that God is concerned about. Amen. All right, let's sing that one. You give us a little trouble.
jealousy. He doesn't understand what we're going through. And, and we get the little pity parties from time to time. All of us do, amen. And we think God's not going to be there. He's not going to do it. He's not going to show up. But guess what? He always does, always will, right when we need him, amen. Well, so far we've looked at the Lord is my shepherd. Where is that? On my right side, amen. With the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is good. That's over on my left side. The Lord is my light and my salvation. That's here. And then my, the Lord is my helper. That is there. Uh, today's verses are packed. Amen. So take your Bibles and uh, if you're able, stand with me to Psalm 18. And we're going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 18, verses 1, 2, and 3. If you're able to stand, if not, definitely understand that. And... Uh, Young men, make sure we uh, keep the volume on the pulpit mic up for our hearers, our listeners uh, online. That'd be a blessing. Uh, Psalm 18, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. Amen. 1, 2, and 3. You should have a superscription over that detailing what's going on here. And uh, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Let's read verses 1, 2, and and three, starting with, I will love thee. Here we go. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Amen. The superscription tells you more about why David wrote this and when he wrote this, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute, but amen, I'm so glad that God is worthy of praise and we can be saved from anything that comes our way. Father, bless now the moments that we have together this morning, and Lord, anoint my lips and anoint our our ears so that we can hear and Lord our hearts that we may receive the word of God this morning it may be a blessing and an encouragement to us we thank you for watching over us continuously Lord now open the hearts to receive the message you have for us today that we can rejoice as David was in praising you for being our rock and so many other things we praise you and thank you, Lord. Bless now those listening online. And Lord, if there's one that is not saved, uh, whether it's a man, woman, a boy, or a girl, or under the sound of my voice here in the auditorium, save them today before they're the last thing too late. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And uh, amen. Well, there is no way we're going to cover everything today. Uh, but we're going to make a good try to get started on it. Amen. Uh, Psalm 18 is uh, pretty much identical to 2 Samuel 22. And uh, almost identical, just some variations here and there. But here in this Psalm 18, David uses several of the Lord is my phrases that uh, you see behind me. Uh, and because uh, through the course of an event in his life or events in his life, as in our lives, our Lord may need to be many things for us. Would you agree with me? Amen? Amen. And maybe it's not just one thing, but it's several things that God needs to be to us as we're going through a situation in our lives. And so David here pins this down. There's an example of all the things that God wants for David here. Nine times you find David personalizing this in verses 1 and 2. He says, uh, my strength in verse 1. In uh, verse number 2, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, my buckler, my salvation, and my high tower. Nine times he made this personal. By the way, let me help you out some. You want to get closer to the Lord, make it personal in your life, Amen. Uh, my wife is personal in my life because I call her my wife. She's my wife, amen. Uh, G2 has my seat. He tries to claim at home, although he bought no furniture, amen. He says, that's my seat. Faith tries to claim Pastor Bennett's seat in our house. And she said, that's my seat. And Pastor Bennett said, no, you got to get it up when I come back. Let's please, 
a uh, special place that Pastor Billy sits when he comes to our house, amen. And so David here nine times is saying, my, making this personal, using some personal pronouns and possessive on top of that. So y'all say my car, my bike. By the way, we say my car, but it's the bank's car, amen. Yeah. If it's not paid off. We say my house, but it's not but it's the bank's house, amen. If it's not paid off. But when it's paid off, guess what? It's mine, amen. One of the gladdest times of life when I got that paid in full and my car was really mine. Then it broke down shortly thereafter. Right. <laughs> but that's the way it goes, amen. Uh, we have to say, my money, amen. And Psalms 18, David is looking back over his life and he's recalling the years of God's God goodness and God's deliverance in his life as he's on the run from enemies, as he's on the run from Saul, and all the other things in his life. By the way, in David's life as well as ours, we've had good times and bad times, would you agree? Amen. We've had easy times, we have hard times, would you agree? Amen. Building times and battling times, I think you would agree. Healthy times and sick times, amen. Rich times and poor times. Now, when I say poor, I'm not saying we're, you know, that they have, don't have any money. But we're poorer than we want to be, amen. You say, that's me right now, amen. Uh, especially over the past years of this pandemic, it has been one of those challenging years, one of the most difficult years that I've been in the ministry. I got saved in 1991, started immediately ministering uh, to teenagers, was a youth pastor in Belgium, came here, began to start this church. In all my years of ministry, this is by far the most challenging year that I've faced, all things put to the side, amen? And so we had that type of a year. Uh, for David and for us, one thing was consistent this past year. The Lord was what we needed plus more. He was what we needed plus more. Amen. So David is kind of signifying that here. God was there through David's years of struggle, and he's been there through ours too. And David, looking back here now, makes this claim about God's deliverance, public praise for everybody to read. Now, by the way, uh, notice down there in the superscription above your song, it says, To the chief musician, a song of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord, notice that, spake unto the Lord the words of this song. So he's praising the Lord or talking to the Lord in this song. It says, in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, and he said, so basically, David is on the throne. He's seated. Uh, Saul is gone. The enemies have all been put to rest. And, of course, he still has enemies. They're not a threat right now because he's in charge. And David, as he's sitting back, just kind of, man, I remember being on the run from King Saul. Man, I remember that it was tough. I remember hiding in the cave. Man, I remember those enemies that, that were always after me. And he's writing down this psalm here. Now, by the way, let me bring your attention to something here. Notice the word enemies in that, that, that superscription there. Delivered him from the hand of how many enemies? Oh. All his enemies. Enemies, that word there means to hate, to be an adversary, to be hostile toward. And it could be a person, it could be a place, and it could be a thing. But David has had some people, some places, and some things hostile towards him. So hating on him, being an adversary to him, being hostile towards him. And David said, the Lord delivered me from them all. By the way, the word delivered means to snatch away, to defend, to escape from, to recover or rescue just when you need an out or an exit. It could be on your job, lunch break comes just in time to get you off. It could be just in time. Friday comes just in time. Or the weekend comes just in time to get you away from a co-worker. Or day off comes just in time to get you away from something that you felt that was hostile towards you. Could be a husband comes to rescue you, or a wife or a child, or the parents come to rescue you. Could be a brother or sister that comes just when you need them because the haters were there on your case. Amen. They were enemies towards you. Amen. It could be a text that comes just when you need some encouragement. A letter that comes. Anybody still write letters? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. A letter that comes just when you need it. Amen. Letters are like a checks in the mail. Amen. Yeah. Uh, a vacation comes just when you need it. <laughs> Spring break comes just when you need it. Our children are looking. They've got one more full week and they get free 
spring break. Amen. They are off of school. Amen. Uh, for me, Pastor Bob, when I used to work, it was exercise time at lunchtime. Man, the haters were there in the morning. The haters were there in the afternoon. Lunchtime, I'd get out and just start praising the Lord. I'm out there just exercising, talking to the Lord, getting my mind just filled up with the praises of God to go back and face the haters again until I got off work. Amen. And then guess what? Getting off time was my out. It was my exit. Amen. He was delivered from the hand of all his enemies, and he quantified and from the hand of Saul, which means that Saul was not his enemy. By the way, somebody can be your enemy and you don't have to be their enemy. Amen. 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 You can love someone without them loving you back. Amen. Amen. Uh, just because they're your enemy, you don't have to hate on them because they're your enemy. Amen. Uh, you can say, look, I'm not going to be your enemy as much as you want to be my enemy. I'm going to handle myself wisely. And so, delivered out of the hand of all the enemies. We're going to look at some of these metaphors David used. The metaphors David used. David begins in verse 2 to describe what God was to him by using metaphors for God. Amen. By the way, a metaphor, what is it? It is a figure of speech that ascribes the traits of one thing to another thing. For instance, Carmen is my honey. When I say Carmen is my honey, what do you think? I mean, she's my sweetheart. She's sweet. Amen. She is sweet. So I say Carmen is my Honey, she is my sweetness, and so I'm attributing to her the sweetness of honey. By the way, honey is sweet. If you don't like honey, something's wrong with your taste buds. Amen. Amen. There's something wrong with your taste buds, definitely. Now, castor oil is terrible. I would never say my honey is my castor oil. <laughs> it's supposed to make you well, but it makes you sick. At least my family made me sick. Cod liver oil made me sick. Amen. Amen. Uh, but honey, my mother would say, all right, we're going to give you some castor oil, but we'll chase it with some honey. I say, can I have the honey first? Amen. <laughs> Keep that in my mouth. Amen. Uh, so a metaphor is a figure of speech that describes the traits of one thing to another. And David takes the person of God and ascribes to him areas of protection or safety or deliverance describing what type of help God was to David in various situations. Here, nine times he lists several things that God is in verses 1 and 2. Amen. By the way, um, David frequently used metaphors in the psalm. I'm going to read you several different psalms here. You don't have to turn there because you won't get there quick enough. Amen. But I want you to notice some of the terms that David metaphorically uses for God. Over in, uh, matter of fact, if you're in... <clears throat> In Psalm 18, down in verse 46, the Lord liveth the blessed be my rock, he calls him, amen, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Over in Psalm 28, he says, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. And Psalm 31, verse 3, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Over in Psalm 40 and verse 17, but I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me, thou art my help and my deliverer, make no tearing, O my God. Psalm 42 and verse 9, he says, I will say unto God, my rock. Psalm 62 and 2, he only is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense. Psalm 62 and verse 6, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, amen. Hey, for a rock and a defense, amen, David is saying, you are my strong one. Psalm 70 and verse 5, he says again, I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God, thou art my help and my deliverer. Psalm 71 and verse 3, be thou my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continue to resort. Thou hast given commandment to save thee, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 90, 91 and verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. David is making the Lord very personal in his life. He says, when I go through some hard times, when I go through some hard times, I'm going to my help. Amen. Amen. By the way, God is his help. Psalm 144 and verse 2. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, and my deliverance, my shield. What's unique about these verses that I just read? Most of what I just read in the Psalms, you find in 18, verse number 2. Look at it again. 
The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. you got to understand something. As David is pinning this song down to the Lord, he is going back over years of being on the run from Saul. He is going through years of battling. He's going through years of doing hiding in the cave and having enemies against him, having to fight years and years before he actually got settled on the throne. All the enemies are subdued. And he looks back and says, man, God, you are everything to me. And he writes, so think about it. If you were writing your song right now, what words would you put in there that God was for you? I'm sure you'd use some of the same ones. I would use deliverer. I would definitely use my strength. I would definitely use my rock. I would definitely use my fortress. I would definitely use buckler. I definitely use my salvation. I definitely use my tower. Amen. Say for sure. What words would you use? I'm just throwing a few more. Amen. And so David, as he's writing this down, he wants you to know how good his Lord is to him. Amen. So what type of help was God to David? We're going to look at these, stopping at each semicolon. Notice what it says here. Uh, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, semicolon. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, semicolon. My buckler and the Lord of my salvation and my high tower. So he, he groups these up into three areas, dividing each one with a semicolon. He said, preacher, what does the semicolon stand for? Children, I know you don't want school, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, man. Semicolon is a punctuation mark indicating a pause. So when he says those first three, Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, pause. Think about that. Hmm. Then he goes on to say, my God, my strength, and my will trust. Hmm. Hmm. Then he goes back to say, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower, period. But then what he say? I will call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised. Amen. So shall I be saved by enemies. He said, you know, if God did it then, he can do it now. Amen. Think about what I just thought about. One, two, three. Hmm, he's good. One, two, three. He's good. One, two, three. He's good. Why would I not call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised? Look what he's done. Amen. And so we're going to look at these in threes, Lord willing, and then hopefully I'll be able to get through the first three. If not, then there's next week unless the rapture happens. Amen. Uh, so uh, the semicolon is there to be between two main clauses. Uh, that is more pronounced than indicated by a comma. So he is going to emphasize three at a time. David said, number one, the Lord is my rock. What does that word rock mean? It means to be lofty, literally or figuratively. It's a stone fortress or a stronghold. So David is saying, the Lord is my stronghold. He is my fortress. He is the one who secures me. By the way, during the unsettling days early in the COVID pandemic, you and I needed a stronghold. We needed a rock. We needed someone that wasn't changing. We needed someone that wasn't moving, something that was stable. For the Hall during the basketball season, we needed a stronghold. Schedules were changing, games were being canceled, games were being set up, practice was being set up. You had to leave at a moment just to get there and find out it ain't happening. Amen. <laughs> And we needed a stronghold. And so David said, the Lord is my rock. He's my lofty stone fortress. He's my stronghold as my rock and my stronghold. Turn over to 62. Psalm 62. As my stronghold, what happens with God as my stronghold? I'm glad you asked. In Psalm 62, David tells you exactly what happened for him and to him and with him during the times that God was his rock. And by the way, it says to, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. And notice verse number two. He says down here, uh, matter of fact, verse one, truly my soul waits upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my what? Rock and what? My salvation and what? He is my defense, all protections. I shall not be greatly moved. As he goes down through this psalm, he goes from not greatly moved to guess what he ends up saying. Notice verse number six. He only is my what? Rock and my what? Salvation. He is my what? Defense. I shall not be what? Moved. He said, I'm not going to be greatly moved. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not about being great. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be drawn away. I'm not going to be taken away. I'm not going to be caught up with all this movement. I'm steadfast. Why? God is my rock. He's my stronghold. 
My dad and I used to go fishing, and we had an anchor that we would use, a large lead uh, piece of uh, anchor, and then that's, that's why I can say it's right. We put that thing all the way down so that it would hit the ground. And guess what? We didn't move. It would go all the way down. Put one at the front, one at the back, and boom. We were stable. Why? It was like our rock. It was our anchor. And so David is saying, I'm not going to be greatly moved. Well, let me change thought here. I'm not going to be moved at all. Why? And notice verse 7. And God, my, and God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. And if God's not moving, guess what? I'm not moving. I'm not moving. So as David is saying, the Lord is my rock, he said, I remember these times when men tried to move me away. They tried to get me to kill King Saul. And I said, no, I'm not going to touch the Lord's anointing. I'm going to stick in with the rock. So David's first thing, he said, the Lord is my rock, meaning he's the stronghold. He is the one who steadies me against adversity. And as my rock, I'm not going to be moved. Go back to Psalm 18. Psalm 18. And so the first one, he says, he is my rock. The second one, David said, the Lord is my fortress. Notice that, the Lord is my rock and uh, my fortress. The definition for fortress is very interesting. It means a, a net, a snare, or a capture. It's a castle or a defense or a strong place. So if you would, think about the medieval castles that they had. And the castle is there. It's the fortress but around the castle, guess what they would oftentimes have? A moat. Guess what was often in the moat? Crocodiles and things that would get you you're trying to go through there, amen? Right? And so around the castle, around the fortress, it would capture you if you were trying to oppose the enemy, but then it would contain you if you're inside the castle. And so he says here, the Lord is my fortress. He's the net for my enemies. He's the snare or he's the capture for my enemies. But he's a castle to me, a defense to me, a strong place to me. My fortress because the Lord captures and contains. He captures the enemies, but he contains me. And so I am in him and he has me. And anyone that comes, he can capture Praise God. That's good. That's good. So David said, the Lord is my fortress. Let me see that in another psalm. Go to Psalm 31 and verse 3. Psalm 31 and verse number 3. And in Psalm 31 and verse number 3, as my fortress, God is going to be the help that I need when I need it. Psalm 31 and verse 3. And uh, notice what, uh, what David says here in Psalm 31. Matter of fact, go up to verse number one. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art what? My rock and what? My fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, what did he say? Lead me and guide me. As my fortress, I'm saying, Lord, lead me, God, me, direct me where I need to go. I know you're my rock. I know you're my stronghold. I know I'm not going to be moved. But when it's time to move, be the fortress. Show me where to go. Show me how to get there. For there's going to be people that are going to oppose you and oppose me. They said, the God, need to look at all my enemies. God, I need wisdom so I don't do the wrong thing when it comes to the enemies that are out there. They could have easily done the wrong thing to Saul. Very, very easily. When you get in the way like that, it's very easy. He could have easily killed Nabal when he was out on the way and Abigail had to come and talk to him and talk sense to him and said, lead me, guide me, because David had a sensitive heart. He always wanted God's leadership. He always wanted God's guidance. And in times that we live right now where everything's uncertain and unsettled, we need the fortress of God's protection. So David said, I need you to lead me and guide me down there in verse number 3 of Psalm 31. Lead me and guide thee. Uh, he says, now therefore, thy name's sake. I'm going to bring a reproach on the name of God. I'm going to do anything that I ought not do. I'm going to be what I need to be for my God. So when you look at these first two, he says, Lord is my rock. He, he's the one who's going to be my lofty one that's not going to allow me to be moved. 
Number two, he's going to be my fortress. He's going to be uh, a capture for them against me, but he's going to contain me. And for my help, he is there to guide me and to deliver me. And then that third one, David said back in Psalm 18. David said, the Lord is my deliverer. Because the Lord is my rock and my fortress, he's going to be my deliverer. I like the definition of this one. Deliverer means to slip out, to cause, to escape, to carry away safely. You know, through the years of David's running, he very rarely stayed in the same place. God had to move him to place to place for his own benefit. But wherever he was at, guess what? God was his rock there. Guess what? Where he went, God was his fortress there. And guess what? Wherever he went, God was his deliverer there. And God allowed him to escape from here to get over here. And he was his rock here. He was his fortress there. He said, I'm going to deliver you and put you over here. And he was his rock there. He was his fortress here. He was a deliverer and put him over here to keep him out of harm's way. And so that word deliver there means to slip out, to cause, to escape, to carry away safely. And as my deliverer, David could say, you know what? He's my haste. He's always there to get me out hastily when I need to get out. Amen. You know, recently we had to uh, go over a fire, uh, the fire extinguisher rule in the house. Telling the kids, hey, the fire breaks out, go this way, go that way, go that way. This is where the fire extinguisher at. Get out. Make a hasty escape. Get out. Don't try to put the fire out yourself. It's beyond your means. You got a fire extinguisher down there. Get out. Amen. The nearest edge of haste. Get out. Now, if you look at Joshua, you look upstairs. Jump out the window. Don't let me say that. <laughs> Get down the best way you can. You know what? A hasty escape is necessary at times. Go over to Psalm 40 and verse 17. Notice what David says about this in Psalm 40. And verse 17. Because there are going to be times in your life and in my life where we're going to need to hastily get out. And in Psalm 40 and verse 17, uh, notice what David says here. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my what? Help and my what? Deliverer. Make no tarrying, oh my God. You know what David is saying? Haste. Hurry up, Lord. I need you to help me. I need you to deliver me. I need you to do something right now. Why? I'm poor. I'm needy. I'm in need right now. But when you have enemies against you, whether it's a person, whether it's a place, or whether it's a thing, you need God to deliver you right now. And you don't want to wait, and you can't wait sometimes. And so you're saying, Lord, speedily help me. But God's going to make sure that we're in a situation where he gets us out just when he needs to. You know, sometimes, for some of us, we have to stand a little bit longer than we want. Sometimes we had to stand in a situation a little bit longer. In David's case, sometimes he had to stand in a situation a little bit longer than he really wanted to stay. But eventually he got out. Go to Psalm 70. Psalm 70, and we will see this phrase again. Make no tearing. Haste. Psalm 70. And notice in Psalm 70, uh, David says in verse number 1, Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Uh, go down to verse number two. Let them be ashamed and confounded. Seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for reward of their shame. They say, aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually that God be magnified. Notice verse five once again. But I am poor and needy, just like he said in the other one. Make haste unto me. He said, God, speedily help me. Oh, God, thou art my help and my deliverer. Say, God, I can't wait. Oh, Lord, make no tearing. Lord, don't stay. Lord, don't waste any time. Lord, I need help now. Amen. And sometimes we feel that way. We go through a situation. And we don't know what to do. We don't know which direction to turn. And uh, the enemies are against us. And as my deliverer, David is saying, he's my hasty help when I need it. Amen. By the way, sometimes we need it. And I'm so glad that God doesn't leave us. He says, you know what? You may have to wait a little bit longer, but I know you can do it with my power. I know you can do it with my grace. I need to do it with my strength. One thing I like about David, David, you don't find him saying, oh, I'm just going to go and give him a black eye. I'm just going to go kick him in the seat of their pants. Oh, I'm just going to go and give peace my mind. You find David saying, what'd you give him? Sick him, Lord. What'd you give him? 
What we said down in verse number uh, two again. Let them be ashamed and confounded to seek after my soul. Let them be turned back with a foot to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. David didn't say he was going to do it. He said, let, let, Lord, you do it. Amen. But he said, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Amen. And David said, my sinner, my focus got to be on praising God, lifting him up, and let such as love thy salvation say, continue, let God be magnified, but he reiterate, but Lord, I'm poor. Lord, I'm needy. Oh, Lord, make haste unto me. Oh, God, thou art my help and my deliverer. Oh, Lord, make no terror. What did David say? No, Lord, I need help. Lord, 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 get that. Oh, why should you be Don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. And I love about you. I've told the Lord on some folks many, many times. Lord, you see what they're doing to me? Lord, you see how they're doing me? You, you see what they're doing? Now, Lord, I can go give them peace my mind, but mine ain't worth much. So, Lord, you give them some of yours. And boy, you see folks change. Right? You see folks change. And then they say, uh huh, mm -hmm. God got a hold of me. Well, I don't know what got into me. I do the devil, amen. And God had to beat the devil out of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, I don't know why you said it either. God beat you, didn't you? <laughs> That's what you're thinking. It's like, you don't say that. I'll offer the help of me. Uh, but you're thinking, yeah, God, you got it. God, you made haste. Yeah, God, you put them through confusion. You put them through shame. They said, aha. God is rich in life. I'm so glad we got a God that's good. And he's good all the time. So those are the first three that we were looking at today. And uh, all three of these go together. My rock, he's uh, the one that's going to hold me strong so that I'm not moved. He's my fortress. He's the one that's going to capture the enemy but keep me contained. He's uh, my deliverer. He's the one that's going to make me cause for escape when I need it. Hasty help in delivering me when I need it the most. And by the way, God knows when we need it the most. He knows when we need it the most. And David's not done yet. That's just the first three. He's got two more. He's got six more. Just to show you how good God is. Now remember, he's looking over the years. He said, this is what God blessed me. And this is how God helped me. Look, just over this past year, I bet you could write a psalm similar to this. Each one of us has had unique circumstances in our life. Now, some have lost jobs. Some have lost health. Some have lost loved ones. Uh, some have lost the access to schools. Some lost the access to supplies. Uh, some lost uh, a lot of different things. Some lost all of the above. Yeah. But yet and still, God was there to be our rock, to be our fortress, to be our deliverer. Mm -hmm. I remember early on, I was picking with Pastor Webb. I said, everybody work from home. Pastor Webb can't work from home. He said, he can't work from home. Much to his dismay, he wanted to work from home. Amen. <laughs> certain jobs you just can't do from home. Amen. You can shop online. You can do a whole lot of things online. But certain jobs you just can't do at home. And so Pastor Webb had to mask up, get out there, and break all the COVID folk, not knowing who had it, who wasn't, who's, who's infected, who's not. And folks, that, that's trying on your mind, knowing that you've got a spouse you've got to come back home to, you've got family you've got to come back home to. That's trying to be out amongst people. Uh, we just went through this year with Jesus with basketball. One day, one of the guys had COVID. Now, how do you get past everybody making the temperature checks? I have no idea. Yeah, no kidding. But it showed up there, and they did the temperature check, no temperature. Throughout the course of practice, 100, 120 degrees. So they shut down two weeks. And then we were wondering, are we infected? So then we couldn't come to church. Pastor Mike enjoyed that, so you got a chance to Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, I'm just saying that if we look back this past year, David had nine times in verses one and two that he said, My, he made it personal. Amen. Let's continue making the Lord personal. When he does something, say, Lord, you're my savior. You're my rock. You're my provider. You're my sustainer. You're my patience. You are my lover. You are my whatever. Make it personal. David said, Lord, I'm going to tell you about my, my God. And because of what God was, he had to say in verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Looking back over my life, he says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. God's going to rescue me. And by the way, God did. Amen. 
Let's not forget that God is more than just a Savior. All these things up here, he is. Is he our salvation? Yes, he is. But he's so much more. He's so much more. He will be what we need him to be when we need him to be it. Yeah. And for many of us, that's a whole lot of things of this past year. I would even say this past week. He's a lot of things that we need him to be. The greatest thing that he wants to be is your Savior. Pastor White got a chance to talk to his cousin just last night. It's the greatest thing that's ever stopped him. God is your provider in everything. Right. He wants you to grow in grace and in knowledge. Let's go out this week and let people know the God that we serve and how he is. I was talking to uh, the uh, Army guy. He came in and get our Army and placed at Brother Kelly and uh, Miss uh, Marley going to put the bill for us there. And, uh, the guy that did the Army back in 2008 looked at it and he said, you haven't aged since 2008. You look the same. He said, well, look at me. Oh, I want to so say nice. God's good. Good. God is I, said, good. I said, God's good. I said, if you see the inside of me, I bet y'all look even older. <laughs> I said, but outside, praise God, God sustained me. He said, look at you and look at me. And I said, look at God. God is good. God's just good like that. Amen. He's good. Amen. And just a testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Clean living, man. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Folks, let's make sure we get God personal and personal in our Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Bless you in this invitation in Jesus' name. Right where you're at, maybe God's speaking to your heart. Maybe online you're listening. And if the Lord Jesus Christ is not your Savior, he wants to be. You need to know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and the ways of sin is death. But the gift of God is the eternal life in Jesus Christ. God wants you to call upon him for your salvation, and he will save you. But you've got to see your need. You've got to see that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried. And the third day, he rose again for you and make him your personal Savior. If you're visiting online, you can just pray a simple prayer. Lord, be merciful on me, a sinner. I need to be saved, and God will save me. If you haven't signed a lot of those, you can pray the same thing. Lord, be merciful on me, a sinner. And God will save you. But you've got to be there with all your heart. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can be saved. Right where you're at, maybe you just need to praise God for him and say, Lord, what were you to me this past year? What did you rescue me from? What did you deliver me from? What type of rock were you for me? What type of fortress were you for me? What deliverer were you for me? What did you get me out of? And I'm sure you come up with a whole lot of things. The small, the still, quiet of your heart, why don't you talk to the Lord? Give him your heart. And leave here praising and rejoicing for the Lord as you two pray the invitation. Maybe God spoke in your heart. Maybe you need to do like David and put some things down so you can see it. God's my heart. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. You fill in the blanks. What was God to you? My provider. My sustainer. For some, he was our sanity. For some of us, he was a strong man. For some, he was a comfort. For some, he was a, a job provider. For some, he made ends meet. For some, he was my economical stay. For some, he was my teacher. He was my counselor. For some, he was my guide. Whatever the Lord was, Give him praise. Give him praise. David throughout the Psalms mentioned over and over again how the Lord is his rock, his fortress, his deliverer, his God, his strength, his buckler, his high tower, his salvation over and over again in the Psalms. Those are descriptive metaphors that never get old. God that continually wants to hear your praise. And my praise. Tell them how good he is just for making up this morning. For giving you safety and travel. For keeping you clear of something. Although when the enemies are there, the 
don't take matters in your own hand. David really easily said, I took matters in my own hand. What he did, he said, God was the one who was my rock, my fortress. God was my deliverer, my strength, my buckler, my salvation, my high tower. Again, we love you and praise you. Thank you for each one that's here. 
those that are listening, thank you for our pastor and his wife and their faithfulness to the house of God and to the preaching and teaching of the word. We do pray you go, you go with us now as we depart. Help us to be a light that shines in a lost and dark world. Again, we love you and praise you. Thank you for being a faithful God and we just trust in you to continue to work and bless in our lives. We ask these things now in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.